Hi, I'm Peter Hannigan. I'm here at the Dobrish factory for Bobcat. And this is one of the original skid steers for the brand that we know as One Tough Animal Folks. So today, here in the new factory, we've got 25,000 of those tough animals made every year. So I'm going to discover, with help from a Bobcat specialist, just how that is done and just how they produce all of their products here. So without further ado, it's from the old to the new. Let's go. So I'm inside the factory here now with my guide, Jürgen. Jürgen, you've worked here at Bobcat for 27 years. Knows a thing about the tough animal folks, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're in a factory environment here. Um, so there is going to be noise around us, folks. But it all starts with high quality steel that so makes the Bobcat that tough animal, isn't it? Correct. We're getting supply actually of high quality steel on a daily basis because we're using about 200 metal sheets per day. Wow. Exactly. Right, so folks, these sheets are in here and when we get to the end of the factory, they're going to be transformed. So it's that time went on. So let's go. Picture. Let's go. Come on. Those sheets coming in get quality inspected and then they get loaded up here. And right. This is a huge stack of how many tons of steel? We have 150 ton uh, capacity on each tower and we have four of them. Now time to get it cut. So the thing about the laser cutting, folks, is it's all about making the most of that individual sheet. We need to be actually very agile because on the assembly line, every single machine will be different for a different customer, for a different region or different country with different specs. Right. So laser technology yeah, allows us actually to cut the, the needed part for the assembly line for a specific order. I've got no gloves on here for a purpose because so there's no sharp edges, there's no correct thing here. See the uh, insert here where we where we put it through? We've got the beef of Bobcat in my hands here. But that's really important, isn't it, that we have no sharp edges on this. The advantage of laser is actually it's super fast. We have agility that we require and also advantage for the people manipulating the seal. No sharp edges, so only benefits. So, folks, we've got the pieces of metal that have come out of the laser, out of the sheet. But now we need to bend them in the right way so that we can shape the model. All right. We have five different presses going from 50 ton all the way to 320 ton of pressure to give the right shape to the future components utilized in the fabric. So this is why it's really interesting. Everything is coming into this factory and you're making it all yourself through that. All right. That is about quality, folks. And this is really important. So, folks, again, the systems in place here are really interesting. This component goes into this bento box. Now, we hear about bento box and we've got Japanese takeaway food. This is because it's a Japanese concept. Why is it important? Well, how do you use the bento box for components, not food? We were inspired by bento box, but Toyota is truly the, the people behind it. Yeah. Because they convert bento box, the Japanese dish, into a very useful three-way quality control. Right. If this box is filled by the person who is supposed to fill it and visually sees that in the phone there's a uh, placeholder for components yeah. and his or her job is not finished until the last component is nested in the phone. Fantastic. Okay. Second way, if, so if I'm somewhere in the fabrication and I'm receiving a box and I can easily identify that there is a hole in the foam, I need to reject it. And if I assemble something and I have one piece too much in my hand, sorry, it's exactly the right quantity of components arriving in the fabrication area. So folks, when I've got my bento box, I slot it into this carriage here, which is designed for the manufacturing process. What have we got here? What's this going to turn into? Well, Peter, you need to know that all the workers are actually staying at their station. It is the right quantity of components required for a specific model for a specific sub-assembly that is coming through the station for sub-assembly welding. Okay? So this card here is obviously for a skid steel loader arm, all right? Right. Could be a small model, I guess, S100. And we will then feed the assembly line because somebody ordered an S100. And these are the components to build the arms of that future customer machine. So we're in the safe zone here, folks. This is the welding element over here where we can't enter, unfortunately, because of safety. Uh, but this is where the carts go in here and then get welded up. And we can see some of the tack benches through here as well, can't we? Correct. So this is the assembly line actually for the uh, skid steel loaders or, or compact track loaders. We will feed all the components you've seen on the jig cards and we will put them on actually on the uh, on the jigs 
We will, we will do some fact time on it, and then we will be feeding robots who will do 80% of the welding. So folks, every machine that I ever see has a critical component element in it. Not just the engine, folks. Here we've got a real critical element to the Bobcat Ray Jumbly. What is so important about this space and what we see in front of us now? Well, you can see here the undercarriage of a skitsy loader. This is truly the know-how of Bobcat, the DNA, the heart. The, in the chain case system, you will have four uh, uh, chains and uh, eight sprockets of very high alloy. So strong that you don't need to replace them for the lifetime of the machine. Only maintenance required is actually the uh, oil change every thousand hours. That's it. We're using 3D modeling, but we're using laser technology right. to create that in here. Why? Well, we are cheating a little bit the, the, the system because we don't say what component we are sliding inside this machine. But the, the, the robot will actually, with laser, will measure every single angle, every single length, dimensions, thickness, uh, diameters, etc. And will recreate a 3D drawing. Right. Why? We will then compare the 3D drawing compared to the blueprint to make sure that what we have just assembled is actually built within the tolerance allowed by the engineers. The last thing you want to have is a chassis not nicely fitting on the assembly line. It's on their carriage. Quality control in 3D, folks. I love it. Me too. So, folks, we're now getting into the paint area. And all of you know that a Bobcat is white and red. However, folks, I've got a little bit of green next to me right in here. Customizable paint here for the customers, isn't it? So, big red conflicts and things like that across the world. Light different colors so that they can recognize their machines. And other people have got their own brands as well, haven't they? Correct. If customers would like to have their private colors, it's possible. Minimum order is five units. Right. So if you like it pink, blue, or yellow, be my guest. Now we're getting to the real cool bit. the assembly line here. Skid steers going down here right now, aren't they? But the factory is not just all about skid steers either, is it? Correct. We have actually four assembly line here in the, the, the bridge factory. Skid steer and track loaders are, believe it or not, on the same assembly line. We have excavator line, we have the small 1 ton and 800 kilo ex uh, assembly line, and last but not least, our la big latest baby, the compact wheel loader. But, I said, this surely is the home of the skid steer. Are they? are actually building more excavators. True story, we are building more excavators than skid steers. And that, folks, is a real surprise here for me at the factory. The other thing that's really important about an assembly line, folks, is productivity and making sure we've got all those bento boxes and all the things in the right spot. This is a design that you've got a bit of a fishbone, isn't it? Tell Correct. How that works. Correct. All the all the sub assembly you've seen just minutes ago being painted are now it's a little bit like Lego coming at the right time at the right sequence for a specific customer, a specific configuration uh, on the assembly line. Left and right of the assembly line components are merging towards one specific machine with one serial number for a specific customer throughout the world. And that, folks, is so important because we've got everything going into the one customer order. And we've said, we spoke with some customers, different types of orders, different colors as well, we've mentioned. Different engines as well. And engines, and of course. So that's really critical here to make sure we get everything right for that individual machine going to that individual customer or fleet, isn't it? Absolutely. So, folks, I knew I recognized the green. It's Sunbelt Rentals. This is the T450. The car is empty, folks. All the components are going on. So here we have it at the end of the line. And we've got some testing to do here. Uh, the F450, this one's been tested. This one's about to come onto the line to be tested. What goes through the testing process and how does that work? Well, we're making sure that at the end of the assembly line, you have a fully uh, operational uh, machine reacting exactly as the operating manual should say and as the engineer designed it for so testing all the hydraulics all the electronics uh, functions and every 20 minutes guess what one machine comes out the assembly line so easy math every hour three machines so every hour three machines get tested ready to go to the customers here and of course the s450 won every 20 minutes but like we mentioned before a bigger line here for excavators how many every 20 minutes here? every hour Three units, whatever the size. So whatever the size, small, medium, they're coming through as well. So right. that's why more excavators have been make it, made here in the factory than the traditional models we'd expect. Cheers. So folks, here we are at the end. The Bobcat stickers on. This is one tough 
excavator animal on the line here. And so we've had the whole factory a glimpse of what's going on. There's many more lines in here. Correct. There were different products on them. We have four assembly lines, and this is now the excavator lines. And all the excavators are following the same principle as loaders, one after the other for a specific customer throughout the world. So the sun is shining outside here, and this is the part of the yard, folks, where the customer gets really excited because every unit has gone through the whole process from the steel that we've seen all the way through to the testing of the 20 minutes that we've just done so that they're getting their real tough animal ready to go, aren't Absolutely. they? And so tell me, you know, we've got a whole heap of excavators here. All of these machines can be specified for the customer, can't they? From the moment the customer configures his machines, we build according to the wish list yep. with all the specs and we're ready to ship. So folks, it's been an experience for me going from one sheet of metal to some beautifully gleaming bobcats where we've all got the big one tough animal in stock right here. But they're not in stock because they're getting shipped out pretty quick all over the world. Cheers soon. Thank you very much, Peter. Take care.